If you're a Texas landowner and you're interested in improving the quality of the genetics on your ranch, you can contact me at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. You know, I cannot believe how green it is here. I mean, every single time I've been here, the place is green and the, I mean, and the deer look absolutely so beautiful. And now we're back, it's like you have arrived. And you've arrived because you have a business plan. I mean, yes, a business plan and it is working, folks. We are at Two Brothers Whitetails just outside of La Rancher, Louisiana. And uh, uh, this place is, is beautiful. It is manicured, the pens are absolutely perfect for deer. And what you're gonna see on today's program is some of the prettiest typical deer in the state of Louisiana. And tell them about your program. I'm telling about your business idea, what you wanted to do. So here at Two Brothers, we, uh, we're about raising big typicals. As a deer hunter, I wanna know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. I get often asked, uh, how is the deer industry? I mean, how's the, the economy in the deer industry? Is the deer business good? Is it bad? Because any business, whether you're in the oil business or restaurant business, I mean, there's ups and downs, and there's ups and downs in the deer industry. And so uh, there's some markets that are doing better than other markets. And Louisiana happens to be one of those markets that it's doing good, like really, really good. And so the people that uh, have got small pieces of property that have been thinking about getting into the deer business, I think there's no better time to do that than right now. And then for that reason, I think uh, how long, I'm kind of trying to figure out how long will this boom last in the Louisiana market? I don't know, but I'm certain it's gonna last for quite some time. And Louisiana is really leading the way in the nation as far as a good economy, because they've got the oil industry down here, rural property is relatively cheap, and the deer, the deer are sought after. And it's always important to remember that Louisiana, the entire state of Louisiana, is a sportsman's paradise. What you're gonna see on today's program is some of the prettiest typical deer in the state of Louisiana, and tell them about your program. I'm telling them about your business idea, what you wanted to do. So here at Two Brothers, we, uh... We're about raising big typicals. And we started that way. We started with a mentor, Vtex Whitetails, out of uh, Winthorpe, Texas, Mr. James and Yvonne Weidenheimer. And uh, we stayed within that line. We liked their typicals. We liked how big they were, and we liked the frame that they had. And uh, so we literally came down here, started building fences and doing our thing. And uh, we studied our market. We wanted to find out what does Louisiana look like? What do they want? How many preserves do we have? And so we started building our doe foundation out of that and we got our does where we wanted them. And then of course we raised big bucks out of that. But to keep that typical, we had to continue to breed that way. And we bred that way for about seven years. And now. most people wound up started chasing score. I mean, they were chasing score and, and they, they've got much bigger scoring animals. These are three-year-olds in here. I think there's an older buck in here, but uh, you know, as, we, as we're talking, we're gonna go back and forth to these deer to show you these typical deer. You know, it amazes me. I travel some of these places up north and they say, oh, we got typical deer. And I go in the pen, where are they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, yeah, I mean, right. these are typical deer. And these are no accident because in the deer industry, a lot of people wind up just chasing inches. I mean, I want a 300 inch deer, a 400 inch deer or bigger. I mean, and so what's happened is at Two Brothers, y'all have focused on, on the look and not the score. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And so as, as we look at these guys, okay, so these are all three year olds except for that one? All three year olds. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, uh, that's the look right there that, in my opinion, somebody wants to see when they go to a deer farm, okay? Uh, a lot of these deer wind up getting released on, on preserves, okay? Yes, that's and correct. the reason why they're getting released on preserves is because those deer, they're gonna enhance the genetics in that preserve. 
uh, any preserve, if you don't bring in new genetics, it's going to get stagnant. So we wind up, uh, as, as uh, preserve owners or deer breeders, we want to look at enhancing our genetics. And when you enhance genetics, it's now moving towards a typical. But in Louisiana, I mean, you're like the daddy-o when it comes to typical. And, and yes, it's sir. because you had the vision years ago to yes, do sir. this, right? Yep. Uh, the deer business is phenomenal. The more we learn about it, the more we grow it and the more we learn that you can do with deer and exotics and all the different types of animals that they have in the state. Louisiana's a phenomenal market to be in. Uh, literally, we have closed borders, but uh, that's been a good thing for the farmers in the state of uh, Louisiana. Uh, we had a lot of deer were coming in from other states and when the borders closed, uh, it really helped our market uh, to really grow for the deer farmers in the state. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. I just deleted that one. <laughs> you deleted, deleted the question? I did it, I think. No, I got it. <laughs> All right, so here's one from France. It says, my state will not allow deer farming but would allow me to raise exotics. In your opinion, for a beginner, what exotic animal would be the easiest to raise? I know, to me, I would say fallow deer. What are your thoughts? Absolutely. And fallow deer is, is the easiest. They're, they're very docile. They're, they're easy to fool with. They're, uh, they're, their death loss is literally none. Yeah, I mean. fallow deer are an awesome animal, very easy to raise. Uh, elk are also beautiful animals, and they're pretty doggone easy to raise, but you need to check the state to make sure they're legal to bring in wherever you live. Now, if y'all have a question, you can get a hold of me on our website. Hit the Connect with Keith tab. My name is Brandon Bollinger with Two Brothers Whitetails. We're located about 60 miles north of New Orleans in La Ronge, Louisiana. We, we raise typical deer, that's our goal. And uh, we spend a lot of, of time and a lot of money to get there. Uh, we're very specific about raising typicals. All right, so on uh, this bunch of deer right here, I want to, before we start getting too into this, I want to talk about uh, the uh, slow growing genetics, okay? The typical genetics, the Texas genetics that y'all have here, two brothers, are, are slower growing genetics than a lot of people have uh, on these big non-typical deer. Would you explain that to them? Yeah, well, um, a, Texas, a Texas buck is going to take longer to grow out than a, than a northern, I'm talking about an age. When you, when you look at a one-year-old with a Texas, you might be looking at a 120, 130 inch yeah. buck. Um, and there'll be little sixes, little fours, little eight points. Well, they'll they'll jump pretty good to the two. You may get them in the 160, 170 range, but when you get to two to jump to three, and then from three to four, they really expand. I mean, they get more mass, they get more tine length, and so uh, they we're happy with one-year-olds that are, that are little sixes, little eights. Right. Then you got late borns, right? You're gonna right. have those few late borns from the AI that didn't catch with your with your uh, backup buck, and they may be they may be little cow horns, or but that doesn't mean they're not gonna be a tremendous deer. So your two year olds, tell me about him. Uh, we're we're really excited about our two year olds. Uh, when people come and visit and they really want to see what the deer is starting to look like, that's the pen I take them to. And recently, you know, we're, we're looking at about August 5th right now. They still have, because they're Texas, they still have a little bit of growing to do. But uh, the two year olds is who we're most excited about. When people come, again, we, when they get to two, just absolutely beautiful. They literally could be sold at that point in the 160, 180 average. But we're gonna take all these two year olds and we're gonna grow them out to three. We're really excited about those. We have Hello in here in the pen and uh, he's 40 inches wide. He had double drops and he's out of our typical genetics. He's a four year old, he's in the two year old pen. But uh, really excited about him. Got a lot of people interested and looking forward to breeding him again to our clean does okay. to see what we get out of him. All right, so if you're interested in contacting Two Brothers Whitetails, give them a telephone number. 985-264-3437. Okay, I wanna, I wanna address this. Every single deer that is here at Two Brothers is in the North American Deer Registry. And what that means, it assures you, the deer buyer, that that deer is who it's supposed to be. That's okay, and, and so, but the, the deal about it is, is that, you know, you can take a look at some of these guys, and we do TV shows from guys that have got one-year-olds that are just unbelievable, and they get, yeah. 
they get a lot of that score from all this non-typical stuff. Well, when those deer become two, they get more non-typical. And three, they get more non-typical. And, and, and so they're a faster growing deer. And, and I kind of compare it to, uh, to, to seeds. You can get seed uh, that grows really, really fast and you get seed that grows really, really slow. And sometimes a slow growing seed, if you get a little more time to mature, it's a better end product. And what it is, we're, we're deer farmers because of the end product, because of the customer. The customer today is looking for typical genetics. And so it does take a little bit longer for them to mature to show you what they're really going to grow into. But as you're looking at these deer, we're going to, the, the cool thing to kind of look and, and realize that you're looking for symmetry. Okay. Prettiness. Okay. That's is correct. what you're looking for. They're pretty. They may be small at one and they may not score a whole lot at two. They're good. But we just showed you the three year olds that these deer grow into and at four, they really blow up. So that's really what we're doing when we're focusing on typical genetics. We realize it's gonna be a slower growing process, but we're growing what the buyer wants to buy. Yeah, and, and your stockers, most people when, they, when they're stocking their genetics, they want, they want three-year-olds and four-year-olds and five-year-olds that look really nice yep. to harvest in, yeah. their, in their preserves. So yeah. uh, we're, again, after, that's what we're after, what the, what the preserve owners are looking for. And so, so he's a businessman. I mean, uh, the, uh, every deer breeder, I tell them, if you're not a businessman, if you don't have a business plan, stop what you're doing and get a business plan. <laughs> I mean, it's, and, and Brandon is a businessman, and he kind of has what I call the big eye. He looks out there and says, what else is going on? Well, I'll tell you what he's got going on. In Louisiana, exotic animals, I mean, he, until now, exotic animals, really nobody has been focusing on exotic animals until now. And Two Brothers Whitetail's got some unbelievable exotics. And coming up after the break, we'll show them to you. If you're in Texas and interested in becoming a deer farmer, you can contact me for deer farming franchise opportunities right here in Texas at deerandwildlifestories.com. So any deer farmer needs to get to know their dark gun as well as possible. And the only way you can really get to know it well is spend plenty of time at the range shooting it. And so, a 2cc dart is typically the, the dart that I like shooting. Uh, it does a good job. It's a good all around size, but darts come in all different sizes. Now, you choose the size dart you want, depending upon what job you're trying to do, what kind of medicine you're actually uh, administering. And so 2cc's is typically what I'm gonna do. And my typical average shot is gonna be about 25 yards, which is where the target is set up here. And so when you wind up getting your dart gun, you're gonna get a little chart in here that'll tell you depending upon what range, what pressures you need to use, depending upon what dart you use. And so this is a good way to start. When you get a dart gun, the best thing to do is go to the range, use this chart and shoot it. And nine times out of 10, you're gonna find out this is accurate. Just another day on the farm. All right, if y'all just joined us, we are uh, just outside of La Ranger, Louisiana at Two Brothers Whitetails. So far on the show, we've shown you lots of pretty whitetails and his whitetail business has really matured to the point that now he is like, uh, he's on top of the game. And so he's doing something else now that nobody else that I know of in Louisiana is doing. And it's raising big bull elk and we wanna show them to you right now. So why in the world did you get in the elk industry? Well, we uh, found out there was an elk herd in Katrina where the, uh, our Billy Nungesser, our Lieutenant Governor, had a, a group of elk. And when Katrina came through, uh, they had to get the elk and move them to upwards around Covington, Louisiana, which is pretty close here. So we got talking to a friend of ours and uh, he said, man, I got a herd of elk. He said, I don't know what to do with them. Can you come help me out? So I'm like, absolutely, we'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> but what is the goal of them? So, I mean, so you got them from Billy, but why in the world did you get into the elk industry when people would think Louisiana elk? Yeah, tell and everybody they survive. why. So I'm like, well, I started studying. I went to NEBA convention and started looking at all the different avenues of elk. And uh, there's medicine, of course, there's velvet, a lot of other things. So I'm like, look, why don't I just go ahead and get these? We have cattle here. We mix them. We mix our exotics and our cattle. And uh, my dream and vision was just to stock other people with. I started. People started calling. They're like, I heard you got elk. Can I get a breeder? Can I get a couple cows? Can, I'm like, uh, you know, I, I'm like, sure. So I get excited about it. We have 18 cows. We have uh, 
about nine bulls. And they're nice. I mean, look at them. Oh, right they're, now they're, they're in beautiful. the velvet. Folks, this is the this is the first week of August, and these elk are really pretty much grown out. Yeah, they I are. Mean, they, you they're know, shed, they, just starting to shed yesterday. Yeah, and I mean, sure. early in the morning when it's cool and it doesn't get cool long here, but uh, they'll start making some noise, start bugling and stuff. It's Nothing really, really like cool. A Louisiana morning when you're sitting in a deer stand and hear an elk bugling. Oh, that's cool. And it's cool. amazing. I mean, amazing. So how is the market uh, for elk? I mean, uh, it's phenomenal. Actually, uh, I, I, I didn't know, so I, we got started, and I'm like, let me look into this, start studying it. As I studied it, started talking to people. They're like, man, could you give me a bull? Could you give me a cow? I'm like, sure. So we've already sold, I know, we sold two breeder bulls last year. We sold about four cows. And so we do a little exchange program too where they'll actually take my bulls and my cows, raise them because they want elk, and then I get the calves. So okay. uh, so that was one way we started. And then uh, we started AI in last year. Mr. James Weitenheimer with VTEX uh, Whitetails actually started an elk ranch and bought a striker. He's the largest bull in North America, 650 inches. So we actually AI'd these cows last year uh, to striker. So we got about four cows, uh, four cows it took that we know of. We're excited about that. And you know, we, my barn's about finished. Uh, we're about to finish my elk barn out. We went to the elk farming handbook and studied that. We took an old dairy barn and we turned it into an elk barn. So. Okay, you know, early, earlier in the show, uh, I talked to you about a business plan, okay? And clearly, Brandon's got a business plan. And you're thinking, elk. Now, anybody watching deer, you know, anybody that watched our show knows that we've done a few elk episodes over the years. And if you haven't watched them, go to our website and we've got links to where you can watch them online. But uh, raising elk, you may, if you're a deer farmer, you may think, well, Raising elk, is it harder or easier than raising whitetail? It's, Tell them about it's that. It's absolutely easy. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. The exotics for me, uh, as I started understanding my preserve and bringing hunters from, from all over, I realized that there was a big need in Louisiana. I was like, we got we need a go-to in Louisiana for exotics. Raising elk, you may, if you're a deer farmer, you may think, well, raising elk, is it harder or easier than raising whitetail? It's, Tell them about it's that. It's absolutely easy. I mean, we literally have bahia grass, and then we plant ryegrass and wheat in the winter. And so there's a little dead time when the clover's not here in Louisiana that we actually feed a little bit. But other than that, they're just like a cow. Okay, so speaking of feed, you know, you, you got these big bulls out here, you got cows, and I mean, they've got unbelievable genetics. So you're not having to go through feed like, you know, we both feed record rack. That's okay, correct. You're not having yeah. to go and feed these guys record rack like we do the whitetails. No, sir. But what do you treat these guys with? Oh, record rack buck developer. They love it. It's like candy. <laughs> you know, the uh, buck developer, I started feeding it on my place a few years ago. It is a textured feed and it is like supercharging your deer. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. We started with the white tails and the elk in early February to when the growing season starts. And then we feed it all the way to August. And we also feed it to our, our does and our, our cow elk as they're you know having their babies and they need to make sure they're you know doing well with their health. And it's phenomenal. It's, I mean, phenomenal. And so, uh, you know, when, when we talk about treating animals, I mean, whether uh, you're a deer farmer, different deer farmers wind up treating with, uh, you know, peanuts or, or record rack golden deer nuggets. Uh, you know, some people, I, I wind up taking tree limbs and throwing them in my pens. Right. I mean, uh, but we treat animals. And what that's for is to get those animals used to coming up to you where you can really look at them close and you can see if anybody's in trouble, as I call it. I mean, that's anybody correct. is sick, if they are, then we do medical attention to them. But uh, so you're using the record rack buck developer, buck developer yeah. to treat these guys and it's working well, obviously. They love it. They yeah. love it. Okay, so not only does uh, Brandon have uh, now a great herd of elk that he is a starting up, but uh, he's got some other exotics and we'll be showing those to you in just a second. So one of the best parts about my job is uh, seeing people not only get into the deer industry, but seeing them prosper. And coming out here to Two Brothers is, is really cool for me because I've seen them go from uh, taking baby steps to getting up walking, and now they're running. And I have a great degree of uh, admiration for Brandon. 
Uh, he stuck to a business plan. It's, uh, it's one that clearly has worked. I mean, he's leading the industry over here in Louisiana. And now he's changed a little bit and now he's focused on exotics. And that's what's so cool. You know, when you get into this business, you know, you start looking at other opportunities out there and some people just get locked down on whitetails and that's cool. I mean, whitetails are great. But if you have a vision like Brandon has, you see that uh, there may be more to it than just whitetail deer because there are people all the time looking for exotics. And so Brandon's made that decision here in La Rancher, Louisiana to race exotics. And I mean, the market is hot and he's doing well. I didn't wake up this morning thinking I was going to be this close to an elk and be surrounded by them, but that's pretty cool for La Rancher, Louisiana, don't you think? You know, this is the uh, third time I've been to Two Brothers Whitetails, and I'm amazed every time I come because Brandon Bollinger has got the vision when it comes to, uh, to not just whitetail deer, but now with exotic animals. And if y'all want more information about what's going on right here at Two Brothers Whitetails, go ahead and give Brandon a call. He'd love to hear from you. If you're watching online, you have any questions or comments, go ahead and get a hold of us. We'd love to hear from you. My name is Keith Warren, and you're watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey, big boy. <laughs>